stands out about this team a couple weeks of practice? Um, I think that we are faster, uh, which we, we played pretty fast last year. Um, we have a lot of guys that can shoot the ball, spread the floor. Um, a lot of guys that, or I say some more guys that make decisions off the bounce. Um, I would say probably a couple more physical drivers, I would say. Um, <clears throat> got a lot of guys that can make plays with the ball in their hands as far as dribbling, passing, and shooting at a high level. So um, we, we, it's, it's a different dynamic, something different than we've had here in the past. Um, some guys that change us a lot offensively uh, and defensively with, with our length. Because where we're not as tall and beefy as we've been in the past, I, I would say we're longer, lankier, and athletic. So we, we got like, a lot of guys that are really good and give us different dimensions we haven't had here. Coach, Coach Chaz, Chaz was just in here. What can you tell us about that young man and what he brings to the table? Chaz is a really good player that has no clue how good he is, which is probably a good thing for us. Um, to try to kind of tap into the potential that he does have. Uh, I think that Chaz, he comes from uh, a, a school that he had a really good coach and Coach Driscoll that um, helped him with his mind offensively, helped him play with a lot of really good pace. And he understands offensive concepts pretty, pretty well. So he's a skilled basketball player that obviously, as everybody knows, he, he really shoots the ball. But uh, the thing that we're trying to help um, him show kind of people and you know, and help him, you know, prove to us every day is how much more he can do than shoot the ball. Uh, he has really good, like I said, pace and field and ball screens. Um, he's a really, really good passer. Something that I, I could I could see on film, we saw, but you don't know until you're in the gym with him every day. Um, and he's a really good kid, really good guy. He's a great teammate. Um, he's almost too nice of a guy at times, um, which, you know, his teammates have gotten at him about it a few times and trying to get him that extra edge. But he's a really, really good player. But more importantly, he's a, he was a good fit for our program as far as a person. Coach, Summer's, Sorry. Summer's always been important. You guys are blending new pieces in. But, you know, in the past, it's been four or five freshmen. Now it's, you know, four or five upperclassmen. How has that changed your all's process? You know, I, I don't think it's changed our process much. If you ask Coach, I think he'd say the same thing. The expectations are just what they are. Um, we spent the first few practices of the summer, I think, kind of going through baby steps and um, more so teaching, talking guys through, um, helping guys understand our why and why we do things and, and why we want to do them at this pace and this speed. But now we've kind of like knocked the training wheels off and we're, we're going. Um, and it's kind of now I think coaches is getting guys used to, I think the, the factor of the durability you know what I mean? How 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 hard we go for how how long we go, um, helping them understand how hard it is playing the SEC, uh, getting guys playing up and down with each other so they're understanding, you know, just that. And I would say the the pace in which we have to play at night in and night out, and kind of trying to simulate that in practice, which we're doing a pretty decent job of. I think. How useful and effective was the Dalton Connect story transferring to you guys and what he did? Uh, now that Jeff actually went through a little bit. Oh, it was great. I think. I think it showed that, you know, Coach Barnes obviously is, is you know, he's coached a lot of really good players in his career. Uh, here in our program, we've always been big on development. And that was a guy that no one really knew much about a year ago or around this time a year ago. Um, and to, you know, a guy that, you know, everybody in the world knows now because he plays for the Los Angeles Lakers and, you know, the success he had. And it was, it was a fun year. It was obviously great to be a part of that process. And, um, us as a staff kind of, and, and as a team, as a program, be around him and see him walk across the stage on draft night. But uh, I would say, you know, in recruiting, obviously it's been great. Um, you know, every uh, kid that can shoot the ball that is six, seven, thinks that they can come here and play that way, um, which is not that easy. <laughs> but, you know, I, it's definitely, we, we reap some benefits from it for sure. What's it been like to watch uh, Felix and Zakai play together? How, how well do they already play off of one another? Honestly, if I'm being completely honest, watching them play together, you think they played together for years. Um, I think that they're probably the, the perfect complement to each other. And I, um, well, I think we said that as a staff when we first got Felix, that he was going to be um, a welcome addition here because of you know his his vertical ability of going up and catching lobs and Zakai being a guy that's that's grown that part of his game as he's been in college. And so um, it's kind of like a safety valve for him. You know, anytime it was like yesterday in practice, there was a switch that happened late in practice where 
you know, Zakai had a big switch on to him, and Felix had a guard switch. They were on offense. And Zakai, it was late in the shot clock. He kind of just threw the ball up at the rim. And Felix just jumped up and got him and just scored it over the top. And and I told Zakai, like, great. That's, that's what you should do. That was a great job. And he was like, I didn't even know where he was. I just kind of threw the ball up. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, you know, I, I think that's the benefit of having somebody like Felix. And, that's the kind of dynamic that he changes with us. It's just someone that's so talented vertically, but also a guy that plays with a lot of um, physicality and aggression down in the paint. Um, I think he adds a, another dimension to us that is kind of similar to what we've had in the past, but it's a little bit more pop to it, I would say. So. Coach, how did, you know, I know you guys were super high on Cam. It felt like you stole one back when he was in high school, but what's he shown people or how has he shown people, you know, go play two, three minutes a game, now he's showing up, you know, as a potential lottery kick. How'd that happen? Yeah, you know, I, I don't think Cam necessarily just completely locks in on the, the whole lottery pick thing. I think it's kind of interesting that people are, you know, saying he's a he's a lottery pick and they haven't seen him. But I think that that contributes to his body, his physicals. I think people obviously saw him at Pro Day last year. He had a really good outing. Um, Cam works really hard on his game and has a chance to play at the next level. And I think for him, it's trying to create the part um, for him. It's, it's not a matter of if he will, it's kind of when. And I think it goes with his development pattern. Um, this summer, he's worked extremely hard. He's been in the gym a ton. Uh, he's gotten a lot better. He's gotten his body um, probably bigger, stronger, more aggressive. Uh, he's gotten even more athletic, which is kind of hard to do when you're a guy like him that is so springy and bouncy anyway. Um, but he's gotten better, man. He's adjusted to the college game. He's taking coaches, coaching in stride, and is growing from that as well. Uh, so we're looking forward to him taking a step forward this year for sure. Um, and just honestly, just continuing to work and, and build off of the success he had last year in, in the small increments and um, turning them into to big usage for him. So, On the court, what are kind of the points of emphasis for his development? I think starting off with Cam is, is pushing himself to be the best defender on the floor. Um, you know, I think coach talks about it with Cam all the time. I talk about it, our staff, we, we all kind of get at him about he, because of his tools and his, his physical gifts, he can be the best defender on the floor every time he steps on the floor. Uh, he's so athletic, he, he can block shots. He's great in passing lanes because of his length. He's quick twitch. Uh, he actually can stay in front of the ball. He's a really smart basketball player with a pretty good feel. So, you know, you, you'd like to push him on that end to, to be great because it adds to his aggression on the offensive end where things come very natural for him on that end of the floor. And uh, he can get a shot off whenever he wants to because, of, like I said, his size and his length, um, his quick trigger. Uh, he gets to the rim. He can finish over the top. Uh, just a, a really good basketball player, man. So, um, and he's complete. But it's him growing his understanding of the game, um, understanding for his teammates. And I think as long as he continues to get better at that, he'll be fine. Coach, how has Darlingstone continued to develop with this program? Say it one more time. Darlingstone, how's he developing now with the program? He's developing well. You know, I think that um, for him, it was coming in and figuring out exactly where he wanted to play in our offense, position-wise. Uh, he's done that pretty well. Um, yesterday, it was it was good because I think his attitude and approach is really good for us. He's a um, straight, narrow, gets to work. Um, you guys talk to him. He, he doesn't say much. You know what I mean? You can get him to talk and smile, but you know, off first, um, his first impression, he just kind of looks like a guy that just ain't about too much. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sure you guys saw the interview you had with Ball Hoops. It was really dry, um, <laughs> but that's kind of him in a funny way. Um, but you know, like yesterday, we had a, a time in practice where Coach challenged him, and um, he probably dominated practice from then on. So he shows a, a really strong competitive nature that he has. And, um, I think a winning formula that, that kind of comes from his pedigree that he's already brought with him that uh, is definitely going to be welcomed here. Couple more for Rob. Coach, have you had a chance to watch DK in the summer league? I have. What's yeah, your, what are your thoughts? Um, he's not in Tennessee anymore playing defense, <laughs> so he's got to have his teammates help a little bit more, uh, or maybe do some things on his end. But I, I actually talked to him a couple nights ago, um, just getting his feel for the for the NBA game. I thought he performed really well. Um, I think sometimes when, when people watch summer league, they want guys to score 40 and just completely dominate every single game. Uh, where with him, he had some games where he was extremely dominant. 
Um, and he showed his shot making ability and his ability to make plays defensively and make guys better. I think that the thing that um, I'm most proud of watching him in summer league is him showing his ability to facilitate and pass the ball. He's done that at a high level where here um, you saw it in spurts, but I mean, a guy was averaging 25 in league play, so he wasn't, you know, it, it was kind of the little dude's job to kind of pass to everybody, right? Um, but he's able to show that and, and show different parts of his game. Uh, JJ Reddick has talked to coach a few times and he's been super complimentary. The dog loves him. Um, he's been watching film with him and putting extra time in with him. So I think the, the thing that the Lakers love the most is, is uh, the willingness to, to work and, and be better uh, that he's going to have. So I think it's been great. What kind of player do you guys have in Milicic? Igor is, is different. Um, when, I, when I talk about the guys that have changed the dynamic of our team, he's probably one of the, the main guys that you think about. Um, since coach has been here, you know, I'm sure you guys have watched um, Tennessee basketball. When has he had a guy that plays the four, the 16, that can dribble, pass, and shoot? Um, and when I say shoot, I mean could possibly shoot 38 plus from three, right? He's, he hasn't had that, and Coach be the first one to say never had anything like that. Um, the things he can do with the ball, you know, Coach had him run the point for a little bit yesterday in practice, and actually looked good. Um, we've tried some different things with him, um, and he's met the challenge. He's really competitive. Uh, he plays really, really hard. Um, you know, his dad is a, is a high level coach over in Europe and his dad called the other day and said, Igor said it's the hardest thing he's ever done. Um, and it's the most fun in basketball he's had. So we're playing really fast. He's come from two programs that didn't play super fast basketball. And he's came into practice and, and elevated uh, practice completely uh, with his pace of play and his skill and feel for the game. So it, it's been a, a fun and it's been welcomed. Um, I think he's going to add a, a completely different dynamic than we've had to our team and something that we're welcoming. We're just going to continue to challenge him on the defensive end. And, um, you know, he's, he's made every challenge thus far, so he just hopefully he continues to do that. One more quick one for Ben. Uh, JP and Kate, what type of offseason have they had? Great, man. They both have worked really hard. Um, Kate went home for like six days. Um, they came right back. JP went home for 10. So they've been here a ton. Uh, they changed their bodies. Um, JP got his six pack back, which is great. <laughs> we're, we were happy to see that because he got a little pudgy at the end of the year. You know what I mean? Too many team dinners. But um, Cade has changed his body. He's, he's worked on his shot a lot. He's gotten a lot better. Uh, you know, Cade is one of those guys that he hadn't played a ton of basketball when he came here. You know, he was a, a football kid a lot when he was younger. And he was growing into his body and he was hurt all the time. So it's it's been, you know, he told us in the season meeting, I just need time to like completely just sell out completely the basketball. And I know I'll be better. In the summer he did that. And he's, he's, he's gotten a lot better. Um, he's doing great in practice, finishing the ball well. Uh, he's gotten better with his playmaking on the perimeter. So he's been great. JP just got to continue to build off the end of his year because I felt like it was really promising. Um, obviously he played in a lot of minutes in the Purdue game where he got his act. He showed he had enough toughness to do that offensively. He's probably the best post scorer that we have. So he has to keep growing in that area and he has to be the guy that when we need to be bailed out um, and get it easy too, we have to be able to throw the ball to him and, and get something easy. I think he's growing in that aspect of the game. He's growing in his ball screen defense. Um, so he's gonna continue to get better. K, K will too. And, um, you know, coach is gonna stay on him. Uh, but, you know, up to, to this point, I mean, they've, they've answered the bill every time it was right. Thanks, Rod.